Hello each and everyone. Welcome to Anamika's Edu Space. And today in this class we are going to start with sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Right? You can already see this topic. Now this is a very very important topic and also this is the second chapter. Right? This one is your second chapter. Chapter 2 of your class 12. In the previous live video we have already studied about the Reproduction in organism that is chapter 1. If you have not seen that previous live session or not attended the previous live session, you can surely attend that and you can surely see the recording of that live session. Now, in today's session, we will start with sexual reproduction in flowery plants. Okay. So, now, before starting this, let me mention you the typical diagram of a flower right and how flower became the main object or the main object for the sexual reproduction okay now this is a typical flower which i'm drawing there are lots of picture in your book which is very very helpful for this purpose but drawing is always something different for a biology student like us right so i'll show you each and every part by labeling as i draw the flower and will clearly understand what is the function of this sexual reproduction and how actually the flower helps in sexual reproduction in case of the flowers. okay so here we go in the previous video we are the, in the previous session if you remember we have learned about how the non flowering plants reproduce okay how the non flowering plants the flower the plants which doesn't have flower how they reproduce now in this chapter we will clearly study about how the flowering plants reproduce because this was really complex that is reproduction by the flowers is really complex and that's why uh, this has been given in a separate chapter okay now this which i have drawn this part this portion right this portion is known as what is this portion known as this this clear portion this green portion what is this known as this portion is known as ovule but i'm not marking it i'm not marking it because i will mark it later okay i'll mark each and everything later and i'll give you total time to understand to draw with me and also to have the full session with me as you have in your class. Okay. So let us see. Now what I am doing? I am drawing some anthers. I am drawing some anthers. Why? Because this is a bisexual flowers. Yesterday or in that video I have already taught you what is bisexual, what is unisexual, what is monoecious plants. What is dioecious plants and also the examples of monoecious and dioecious plants. In the first chapter only, we have cleared all our doubts, right? Now, in this chapter, we are only going to clear, specifically we are going to study about the flowering plants or the reproduction process in the flowering plants, okay? Now, what I am doing, these are all the anthers which I am doing. All the anthers you can see. These are anthers are always bilobed in the Previous session also we know that anthers are bilobed, right? And in the class 10 or in previous classes, we have also studied how the anther looks, how the filament looks like, okay? So, this is the bilobed anther which I am drawing now. And this, and, and this long thread-like structure or the long filamentous structure is the filament of the anther, okay? It is the filament of the anther. As it is a bisexual flower, so the male and the female part both can be seen in a single flower. Right? We can see both the female and the male part in the single flower. Okay. Now suppose this is this one is a china rose or a hibiscus flower, and that hibiscus flower has red petals. Okay. So this is a china rose flower. What is this? This is a china rose. So if you draw a china, if you uh, get the uh, get a uh, china rose flower you can cut it and see that how these are arranged 
Now we will one by one name each and everything. Okay. We'll name each and everything. Okay. I forgot to draw something which I forgot. You can make me uh, remind in the comment section this one. I forgot to draw the stalk of the flower from the where the flower is actually raising or the base of the flower. So it's we'll just say this. What is this? This one is the stalk. Stalk of the flower. Okay. Then what is this region? This the region is known as the thalamus region. Okay. Out from outside, we can find the China rose flower is having a having this region, right? I'll show you a China rose flower. Suppose this one is a China rose flower. Okay. You look. It look like looks like this almost. And then there's a green green color region like this. No green color region from actually the which covers the bird. When it is a China rose flower, which covers the bird. So yes, this only is known as the stalk. Okay, and this part is known as the thalamus. And these are the red petals. These are the red petals. And from here we get something. Okay, here we get green, green something. And those are known as the sepals. Those are known as the sepals. In some plants, this sepal and the petal is fused together or connected together or jointed together. Then these two are known as the sepals and petals will be known as the tepals. Okay, sepals plus petals will be known as the tepals. Clear? So this only we will study in detail. We'll study in detail what are all the parts of the flower. Okay. Now here, this one is known as the ovule. Inside the ovary, suppose I'll mention this one is the ovary. This one is your ovary, right? This whole part, this whole, this my, as my pointer goes, this whole part, this whole blue part, as I'm showing you, this whole part is your ovary, okay? Or this over like structure is your ovary. Inside the ovary, there will be a seed or something that will be known as your ovule. That will be known as your ovule. Is it clear? As I'm drawing, you can also draw and make the diagram of the flower first clear in your mind that how the flowers look like. If, if you clear in your mind that how the flowers look like, then surely you can clear that how the sexual reproduction actually or how the process actually goes on. Now, as I said to you, what are these? These are the sepals. So, this is also a sepal. This is also a sepal. Okay. Which I have drawn in a bigger way. Sepals. Inside the sepals, what these, what will be the, these colors thing? Is that this color? We'll get okay. So, what are these? These are your nectariferous area where actually you can get the nectar, plant nectar. You see the butterflies and all. So, where the nectar is produced, the nectar is produced here, the nectar in the nectariferous area. Okay. Now, after that, this after ovary, we go long straight up, right? We go long straight up. Now, what this long straight up is known as? This one, this portion. I'll, I'll just highlight this portion. I'll just highlight this portion, this one. As I'm highlighting with the yellow color, you can see. Yes, I'm highlighting it with the yellow color, as you can see. This portion. What is this portion known as, dear? This portion is known as the style. This portion is known as the style. Don't mix your concept. More, don't mix the concept between stigma and style, because style will be the style out of different sizes, different patterns, and style out of different various type of different styles you can find. Okay, different type of styles arrangement you can find. But stigma is that portion or that big shape structure which actually contains the glue. See, from the stigma we can just clear it out. It is stick. Stigma, stigma. Okay, so if it is sticking out, then it will be the big shape structure. You will never then be confused with the style and the stigma. Stigma contains the receives the pollen grain. It actually receives this pollen grain. And style is the long passage. What is style here? It is a long passage, or you may say, style is a long canal. As in the bryophytes, we can see that there was. Long canal cell, multi jacketed cell, right? So, similarly, in this is a this is a birth canal as a as in human female, we can find birth canal, 
right? As in human female, we can find birth canal. Similarly, this portion or this style is the canal. This style is the canal. Okay, that is the passage or the long passage. Clear? Now comes the male part. This was all about the female part. That is o style, ovule, ovary, stigma. Each and everything was the female part. Okay. Now comes the male part that is anther. What we can find anther. Now this anther is a box like structure which is bilobed. This anther is a box like structure which is bilobed. This bilobed anther contains what? This bilobed anther contains the pollen. This anther contains the pollen grains. Now what is the pollen grains? Pollen grains is the only continuity that maintains the only continuity of the light. This contains the life within it and when the pollen grains fall into the stigma, the stigma uh, takes the pollen grain through the style, the pollen grain travels through the style and then the pollen grain is raised to the ovary and then it reaches to the ovule and then it reaches to the egg cell and then it fuses with the egg cell, right? This was the clear concept of sexual reproduction, how it goes in plodding plants. But... Before that, we have to clearly learn about the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system in the plants as we always learn about both the female and the male reproductive system in case of the humans also, right? So, similarly, anther. This one is anther. And what is carrying the anther or what is holding the anther up? The thing that is holding or the filamentous structure that is holding the anther up or the thread-like structure that is known as filament, Okay. So, what are the male parts? I'll draw. I'll uh, draw a thing. Uh, draw another highlighter in the male parts. That is, as you can see, that is the birth. Uh, sorry, the filament. The filament is the male part. The anther is the male part. Okay. And what are the female parts? What are the female parts? Now we'll see. What are the female parts, dear? The female parts are stigma. Okay. The female part are style. The female part are ovule, the female part are ovary, the female part are, uh, sorry, stock is not the female part. One second. Okay. Stigma, style, ovule and ovary. Okay. These are your female part. Dear students, is it clear the typical structure of the flower? So, what are flowers? Flowers are the objects of the aesthetic value, social value, ornamental value religious value and also the cultural value, right? The myriads of the flowers we enjoy in gazing at. When we give, when someone gives us a flower, we so much enjoy that flower, right? Gazing at the flower because flowers are very beautiful in nature. They have good fragrances, good smell and they are also very, very bright and rich in color. And they are also as an aid to sexual reproduction. They're the first thing through which the sexual reproduction actually starts. Clear? Now we will move ahead to another or the next part of our video. So yes, if it is clear now, now we will as in this chapter, what we will learn? We will learn about the, what else we will learn in this chapter. Let us see that first. Okay. So, as I always, before starting the chapter, before starting any of the chapter, I give you a clear concept that what we will learn in this chapter. So, this was uh, about all reproduction. This was, this chapter is about reproduction or I may say sexual reproduction in flowering plants. If we say ma'am, is there a sexual reproduction in flowering plants? So yes, dear, there is. As we have studied in the first chapter, that is reproduction other than the other than the flower. If there will be reproduction other than the uh, other than the flower, that is from stem, from roots, from uh, vegetative propagation, all the from the tissues, etc., etc. That is um, that is a part which is not sexual, not considered as sexual. Sexual reproduction will only be considered in case there is a reproduction through flower. Okay? So, that's why it is written as sexual reproduction in the flowering plants. So, flower is very important and flower is the main aid for the sexual reproduction. In this chapter, what we will study, the main, main important point we will study is, first is morphology. Okay? 
we will study about morphology next thing we will study about the structure and also about the process okay of what process of what we will study on morphology of flower how the flower looks what uh, what it contains what actually is there in the flower which helps in sexual reproduction and all so we'll study about the morphology of flower then we'll study about structure and the process of what structure and the process of sexual reproduction in the plants sexual reproduction in whom sexual reproduction in the plants so this is also very important now we'll clearly discuss what we will study now we'll clearly discuss what else we will study so in sexual reproduction of the flowering plants also there are lots of processes as we have studied in the previous chapter that is uh, pre fertilization post fertilization and fertilization events so as we we can see so there will be pre fertilization events okay pre fertilization that is before fertilization what happens and what the flower undergoes before fertilization okay next we'll study about post fertilization pre and post are there always always if there we will study about reproduction and we will now study about fertilization that doesn't make sense right so we will also have the post fertilization events and also there will be double fertilization but there will be there will be double fertilization okay there will be double fertilization because in case of the flowering plants we get the 3n structure right in case of the flowering plants we get 3n structure so this is known as double fertilization actually what is double fertilization i'll clearly tell you in a short okay in short also we can say that is syngamy we have already studied what is syngamy right syngamy means fusion of the gametes or the fusion of the male and the female nucleus or in short syngamy means fertilization right syngamy plus when there will be triple fusion with syngamy when there will be triple fusion then it will be known as double fertilization okay then it will be known as double fertilization first there will be syngamy or first there will be fertilization or the fusion of the male and the female gamete and then there will be triple fusion clear the what is triple fusion and what is etc etc will learn in details so don't worry about that because ma'am is here right okay next let us discuss about other events which we are going to study here other events i'm just telling you the overall or the overall chapter what we are going to study so it will take just little bit of time don't worry about that and we we'll surely okay now we'll have another thing that is main thing that is pollination how the pollination goes on that is also another point to study in this chapter the main main points what are the main main points we'll study in this chapter all i'm discussing now so yes if you uh, want to see the video till the end then you must know that what else we are going to discuss in this chapter in the pre fertilization events we are going to talk about what we are going to talk about development okay we are going to talk about development of what of gametes obviously of gametes we'll talk about development of gamete as we have talked about in the, in the organisms also in the lower groups of organism as well as in the plants there will be two gametes male gamete and the female gamete so in the pre fertilization events always we are going to talk about formation of the gamete development of the gamete and maturation of the gamete okay formation development and maturation is it clear now students okay now after the pre fertilization events there will be pollination now how the pollination is being done pollination is also been done with three main processes what are those three main processes so first pollination is done by autogamy or which is known as self pollination that is no one else is required for pollination and uh, they are self dependent and they can do the pollination by self next comes the gatenogamy in gatenogamy we also have another pollination right and in xenogamy what is gatenogamy what is xenogamy will clearly no but what is gamy actually gamus what is gamus and from where the gametes came gamus means marriage okay or you may say in the biological term it is mean mating gamus means mating so this is very important that if you don't know about this uh, a clear clear concept you have to have to in each and every chapter so what is human made gamus what gamus means marriage or mating you can also make that note as i'm teaching you or uh, yes you can obviously make the note now after uh, this in this pollination now pre fertilization was studied then pollination was studied then double fertilization was studied now what are the rest part that is 
post fertilization or the development of in the post fertilization we'll study about development of what after fertilization what happens we'll study about development of the endosperm okay we'll study about the development of the endosperm we'll study about the development of the embryo right we'll study about the development of the seed and we also will study about the development of the fruit so this everything we are going to study in this chapter right next we'll study about the uh, sexual reproduction in tarding plants we'll study about another thing it is outbreeding devices okay we'll study about the outbreeding devices now what are the outbreeding devices and what is outbreeding if there is no fertilization which is done by the plants then we need some fertilization which is known as captive fertilization and we need uh, when in there is there will be plant which is unisexual in nature but we want the plant to be bisexual and do self pollination then we will have another even if the plant is having self pollination the plant is self pollinated in nature but we want the plant to cross pollinate then we will do another thing and when the plant is self incompatible when it is not being able to produce any offspring and self is self incompatible it is not able to uh, pollinate other uh, or other plant of their own species then we can have these type of techniques through which we can induce the plant to reproduce okay so when we are inducing the plant to reproduce according to our thinking okay when we are inducing someone when we are manipulating someone so when we are manipulating someone and then we are there and we are telling that reproduce in this way as we want that is known as outbreeding devices in case of the plants so what are the out, outbreeding devices dicline dicogamy and self incompatibility okay so this was about the clear event which we have already uh, seen in this type of plant right so let me revise it once again so what we will study we will study about sexual reproduction in tarding plants we will study about three events post fertilization event pre fertilization event pollination and double fertilization and then last we will study about outbreeding devices also so these were the main points and also the clear vivid points or the structure which we are going to study today in this lecture okay so let's start with pre fertilization event let's start with pre fertilization event so what happens in the first one that is pre fertilization event as i already told you that in pre fertilization we will study about the development of the gametes right we will study about the structure of structure and event we will in the pre fertilization we will study about what is the structure we find and what is the events we can see here okay these two points are very very important which we are going to study so first i am going to write that is you can also make the note along with me male reproductive system male reproductive system is known as androecium is known as androecium female that is female reproductive system female reproductive system is known as gynoecium right number 1 what this male reproductive system or the androecium contains right so first we'll study about male reproductive system male reproductive system contains stamen right it contains the microsporangium if there will be microspores if there will be spores or the uh, which is known as the uh, where the pollen grains are produced it will is microsporangium right and it contains the pollen grains it contains the pollen grains clear now what happens this androecium what is there there is androecium now this androecium is only this androecium is only a unit a single unit which is called as stamen as a single unit this androecium is known as stamen that is the mole male part is known as the stamen clear now this 
androsium or this stamen is called also called as microphyte okay this is also called as microphyte the microphyte one second what happens it is also called as micro microsporophyll microsporophyll okay now what happens that a long thin structure called the filament joins and then forms the stamen okay like clearly say you what happens actually first a long thin structure is there which is known as filament right which is known as filament and free end of the filament is bilobed free end of filament is bilobed as i already shown you right it is a bilobed structure which looks like almost this We're studying about this structure right which looks like this this is your filament this is your anther so it is bilobed and it is also this anther is what this anther is swollen this anther is swollen it is a microspore it is a if you take what is my what is an anther anther is a microspore bearing structure it bears the microspore okay it bears the microspore so it is a microspore bearing structure so this is what this one is this description was of all of anther this description was all of anther and this description was all of this description was all of filament right so now this bilobed anther the which is bilobed but having two lobes this anther has two lobes right you can find this one lobe lobe one and this one is lobe two so it is a bilobed anther now each lobe has sorry each lobe will it will be as it is each lobe has two theca okay so what is this called this is known as diothecious this is known as diothecious okay so what was anther here anther is the bilobed structure anther is the bilobed structure it was bilobed okay it has two lobes now each lobe has two theca and this is known as dithecious so a single anther when there is single anther then how many theca it will contain it will contain four thecas because number 1 here the number 1 right here the number 1 is containing two theca number 2 is containing two theca 2 plus 2 how much four theca clear this was is very very important these things you have to clear in your mind because these questions are only asked in your neat examination to clarify your doubt these questions are only asked in your neat ug entrance examination of biology as i make sure that every day i take classes every day i take uh, make you do the mcqs in an academy so that's why i know that how type of questions and which type of questions are asked clear now microsporophyll as a one unit is known as a stamen and this filament this filament joins to this stamen this filament joins to stamen okay this filament joins to stamen and this two this two that is the filament and the anther is to mix out the microsporophyll microsporophyll now you have to clearly understand this that how the microsporophyll is formed how this microsporophyll is formed this microsporophyll is formed by two things one is the anther one is the filament a and f okay next or we may say anther and the filament is equals to okay we may say anther and the filament that is anther plus filament equals to fa fa equals to father fa equals to father father equals to male male equals to male gamete right male gamete equals to androsium male gamete equals to androsium okay androsium means there will be stamens right so anther and filament and stamen is made up of anther plus filament 
clear how it is formed? See. It is so clear, right? Next. So let me see whether it's going on all well or not. Is it clear? If it is clear, then please write it that yes, ma'am, it's clear. Okay, so we'll study now. Just wait a second. Okay, now as we have studied about anther, now we will clearly know what it was, right? So, a typical anther has four micro sporangia, right? These micro sporangia develops into pollen okay and as it has four microsporangia okay so it is known as tetrasporangiate it is known as tetrasporangiate okay if you are watching the session make sure that you share the session with your friends also Okay. Now, after this, what happens? As it develops into pollen grain, right? It has pollen mother cells. Okay. Now, this pollen mother cells or the microspore mother cell, what we say? Microspore mother cell. undergoes what it undergoes meiosis it undergoes meiosis and after meiosis what do we get we actually get the pollen grains okay so each typical anther is bilobed bean structure right each typical anther is bilobed bean structure in this bilobe it contains 
theta which contains this contains two theta this contains two theta so it is it is known as the what it is known i already say is diothecus diothecus right diothecus next this diothecus contains four tetra this so also it is known it is contains uh, under this theta they contain the microsporangia four microsporangia so it is known as microsporangia now this microsporangia develops into pollen sac and this pollen sac develop has the pollen mother cell and this pollen mother cell undergoes the sexual division that is meiosis and this after meiosis we get the pollen grains right so what happens in the capsular species or in the members of the cruciferiaceae the anther are diathecus and the anther are tetraporangius but in the malvaceous species that is in hibiscus the anther is monotheus and it is the and it is biosporangian so remember the fact that when there will be diathecus okay when they will be diathecus when they will be diathecus then they will there will be tetrasporangian tetrasporangian when they will be monotheus monotheus okay then they will be bisporangian Here, yeah. and this is seen in family of or the members of Cruciferia, Cruciferi, Cruciferi, and this is seen in the members of the Hibiscus. Clear? Yeah. Next, we'll clearly learn about the transverse section of the anther as it is higher studies. So learn about the transverse section of the anther. So this is a typical anthers what look like, right? Now this portion will study in the clear how it contains the four microsporangia, how it is formed, and all about this. So this is how actually the anthers look like when it is big enough. Okay, big enough? No, I mean when it is matured. This is the filament. After this, the filament. So this one and this one, both are the filament. Both are the filament. Okay. Now here, you can see here. This yellow yellow thing are all your pollen grains. Okay, now this this sac, that's this red sac. This red sac is known as the pollen sac. Okay, pollen sac. Now, what was the name of the pollen sac? Microsporangia, right? What was the name of the pollen sac? The name of the pollen sac was microsporangia. Okay, and this green yellow color thing inside the my pollen sac is your pollen grains inside the pollen sac is your pollen grains okay and this one this line this line this line all are the line of dehiscence what is what do you mean by line of dehiscence when the anther ruptures out then this lines break out and the pollen grain dehes okay the pollen grain comes out or burst out so this is known as the line of dehiscence okay and this one is the anther i already told you this one is the anther this one is the filament and this only we are seeing in details in the bigger view or we are seeing the transverse section what is this this is a ts of anther if we cut the anther from between like this, then we will get the transverse section. Transverse section through a an anther. So we are studying about the transverse section through a an anther. In the transverse section, the anther looks like a tetragonal shape. Okay, it looks like what? It looks like tetragonal shape. Tetragonal. In microsporangium, okay. Now the microsporangium is actually circular. 
microsporangium this one this bispolen sac or pollen sac or microsporangia when it is singular then it is known as microsporangium when it is plural that is many are there one two three four four are there so i have written microsporangia here and this one i am telling about one then it is circular in structure okay but actually the anther is tetragonal anther is tetragonal now we can also find this main structure which is present in the anther that is epidermis okay what else structure we can find which is present in the anther is as you can write following structures we can find first one is epidermis okay the epidermis is the single celled protective layer protective outer layer okay number 2 what we can find is endothecium so what is endothecium endothecium is below the epidermis endothecium is the we may say this is the outer most layer okay uh, after uh, before epidermis there is nothing below the epidermis there will be endothecium which is a single cell thick layer okay single cell thick layer and during maturation when there will maturation what happens during maturation number two things happen first thing is the outer wall of the cells remain thin okay the outer wall remains thin and the inner wall becomes thick outer becomes thin and the inner wall of the anther becomes thin the inner wall cells become thin and they also become radial they also become radial and uh, how it becomes thin because there will be cellular decomposition okay the cellulose decompose in the outer wall during maturation and thus the inner wall becomes thin uh, sorry inner wall becomes thick sorry inner wall becomes thick and there is cellulose deposition clear the outer walls become thin and the inner walls become thick due to cellulose deposition now this radial wall has some things what these radial walls have i will study about this this radial wall have some callous band this radial wall have some callous bands these callous band are except it uh, is absent when it is absent in some places absent in some places which is known as stomium which is known as stomium so what is stomium when these when this callous band will be absent in some phases which is present in other when it will be absent in some phase phases then it will be known as stomium right stomium is actually the site of dehiscence of the anther stomium is actually the site of site of the dehiscence in anther clear so this is the stomium next third layer which anther contains third layer which is very very important is the middle layer it contains the middle layer okay so middle layer contains two things one is the parenchyma cell and it is also one to three cell links thick so it is a parenchyma cell you can always say it is a parenchyma cell which is one to three cell thick the middle layer is really thick okay thicker than one to three cells number fourth layer is your very very important that anther contains okay that anther contains is your septum 
contains septum. The septum is very very important. And septum, from the septum also there is lot of function of the septum. And septum is important. Very important layer of the anterior is septum. So from the outside inward, the anther contains epidermis, then endothecium, then middle layer, and then septum. Now we'll learn about the septum. Okay, what the septum contains actually. The septum is the innermost layer. It is the innermost layer, or we may say innermost layer. Number two, it is nutritive. It provides nutrition. So it is a nutritive layer. Okay, it is a nutritive. Layer next above after above being nutritive, it is also single cell thick. It is also single cell thick layer. Okay, it is a single cell thick layer, and then it is initially, and then initially the cells are diploid. Initially the cells are diploid in the tip term. But after that, later what happens? Uh, there will be free endomitosis in the septum. There will be free endomitosis, free nuclear division. Okay. There goes on endomitosis, and there is free nucleus division. Due to which, later what happens? Later what happens? When there will be nuclear division and all, what happens? There becomes the ploid they becomes ploid they attains a ploid level and that ploid level is polyploid okay because they were diploid that is 2n in structure and they then becomes many ploid many poly means many so they will many polyploid and all they also become multinucleated as there is many ploid that is uh, there are uh, uh, more than 3n more than 2n so it is multinucleate Okay, and another important thing about the septum is this disappears in the mature anther. There you cannot see a septum, or you cannot detect the anther, or you cannot detect the septum in the mature anther. Okay, so you cannot detect the septum in a mature anther. It disappears actually. So this was the thing which is of septum. Now there's lots of functions of septum. What are the functions of septum? When we read, I'll just tell you the functions. You can also find the functions in your book. So I'm not writing. It provides the nutrition with. That's why it is known as the nutritive layer. It forms the what? It forms Uzbe's body. It forms the Uzbe's body. So this, if the question asks in your NCI neat examination that who forms the Uzbe's body, then you have to say that the septum forms the Uzbe's body. Right, and there is also secretion of sporopollen. There is secretion of sporopollen. So this is also very important. There is the secretion of the sporopollen. So if we see an anther like this, we can find a lot of cells inside the anther. Right. You can see a lot of cells like this. We can find a lot of cells. The last cell or the last area is epidermis. The inner area is known as the endothecium. Then comes the middle or the middle layer, which is thicker in nature. Right after the middle layer, in the middle layer only. After that, you will find some cells. Uh, the square-like cells you can find. Okay. The square-like cells you can find. As you can see, the square-like cells. Now, these cells contains these cells contains the this ones. Now, these cells contains the microspore mother cell. These are the microspore mother cell. Okay, these microspore mother cell and around the microspore mother cell, these are the septum. These are the septum which are studying now. These are your septum. Okay. So what is the septum? Septum is the innermost layer. It is the nutritive layer. It is a single cell thick layer. And initially the cells are diploid in the septum, and later it becomes attains a majority, and it becomes polyploidy after nuclear division, and it is a multinucleated. It also disappears when there is mature anther. Okay. Now we study about how the there is a development of the anther. We we'll study in the next topic about development. 
of anther and microsporogenesis. This is known as microsporogenesis. Okay. So, a group of cells which are located just below the epidermis in the hypodermic region at the four corners becomes large. Okay. When there is anther term, the hypodermal region, the four corner cells become the large. Okay. Hypo, sorry. Hypodermal region. The four corner cells become large. And then these cells are known as the archesporeal cells. These cells are known as the archeporeal cells. These archeporeal cells divide perikinally to form the primary parietal cells and primary sporogenous cell. This archeporeal cell divides perikinally and this forms the primary parietal cells and primary poro genus cells. Okay. Now these primary porozoonous cells now this primary porozoonous this primary porozoonous cells becomes two things. What? The first thing is primary parietal cells. It becomes primary parietal these primary parietal cells and another one is primary porogenous cells. Okay. Now, the primary parietal cell, as I said, the dicoporeal cell, after primary parietal cell, it goes perikinally and antikinally division, and this primary parietal cell forms the endothecium. This primary parietal cell forms the endothecium. Okay. It forms the tapetum and it also forms the middle layer which is present in the mature anther. Clear? And the primary sporogenous cell after going on through mitotic division forms the sporogenous cells from the sporogenous cells. After the sporogenous cell goes on differentiation and forms the microspore mother cell. Okay? This goes through microspore mother cell through differentiation. Clear? So, how the anther is formed? A group of cells which are located just below the epidermis in the hypodermal region. Okay? These cells actually becomes large in size. Right? And they large in size. After becoming large in size, these are known as the archesporeal cells. These archesporeal cells to form two types of cells. One is primary parietal cell and one is primary sporogenous cell. This primary porogenous cell undergoes division, which is perikinal division and antikinal division, and then they form endothecium, tapetum, and middle layer. Okay. Now this primary parietal cell, uh, another is that primary sporogenous cell. Primary sporogenous cell undergoes division, which is known as the mitotic division. This division is mitotic division. After going undergoing mitotic division, it forms the sporogenous cell. Now this sporogenous cell goes on differentiation and they forms the microspore mother cells. Clear, students? Now this was only the total uh, development of the anther. I hope it is clear. Next we'll study about the development of the female gamete. Okay. We'll study about the development of the female gamete. How the female gamete is developing. Clear? Uh, uh, okay. One second. I One thing is left that is after formation of the microspore mother cell that is MMC what happens? It undergoes meiosis. It undergoes meiosis and after undergoing meiosis it forms four haploid four haploid microspore but these microspore are also tetrad in nature tetrad in nature right this four haploid microspore forms actually the pollen grain and these pollen grains are the player 
pollen grains are spherical and it is of 25 to 50 new meter in diameter. After the microphore applied mother spore, what we get? We get pollen grains. Right? This pollen grains are 25 to 50 new meter in diameter. Okay. Now, this pollen grain is surrounded by two wall layers. One second. This surrounded, it is surrounded by two wall layers. What are the two wall layers? One is the outer exine and another is in, inner enzyme. Outer exine which is the outer layer and inner enzyme, which is the inner layer. Okay, enzyme and exine. Exine is thick. The enzyme, exine layer is thick. It is rigid. It is thick. It is also rigid. It is made up of sporopollenin. It is made up of sporopollenin. Now, what is sporopollenin will also come to this. So, don't, um, don't think that it is a thing which we are just covering up and up. So, inner enzyme layer is thin. It is soft. It is elastic. Okay. And it is also made up of pectocellulose. Okay. It is made up of pectocellulose. This sporopollenin layer is very very non biodegradable and it is also highly resistant and it is it is almost we can say that uh, it is absent in few few uh, when the sporopollenin is absent in few areas when it is absent in few areas then we call it as a germ pore it becomes a pore and it is becomes a pore for the germs to enter and in time comes out through any one of the germ pore when the sporopollenin the covering of the sporopollenin gets like this and it creates a jump pore. This one is jump pore. This one is another jump pore. This one is another. It creates a pore. And when the entire layer is matured, it comes out through any one of the jump pore during termination of the pollen tube. Then the entire layer comes out. And after that, what happens? The pollen tube looks like this. The pollen tube, the pollen tube almost looks like this. The entire layer comes out, right? And this is the exine layer. This is the exine. And this was the germ pore. This was the germ pore from where the pollen, uh, from where the entine layer actually came out. This is entine, this exine, this entine, and the germ pore, then the, uh, then the pollen tube is coming out. And this one is known as the pollen tube. Clear? Yeah. Now we will come to microgametogenesis. How actually? The gametogenesis of the male gametogenesis is what? So, microgametogenesis. Microgametogenesis is nothing but the development of the male gamete, right? Now, the pollen grain is the first cell of the male gametophyte. Pollen grain is the first cell of the male gametophyte. Clear? Now, pre-pollination development, when there is before pollination, what happens inside the microsporogenesis? First is the pollen grain. Here is the pollen grain. The pollen grain undergoes unequal division. The pollen grain undergoes unequal division. Okay, and it forms two things. First is small nucleus, and second is large irregular nucleus. Clear? Now, this small nucleus is present near the wall, and this one is present inside the cytoplasm. 
small nucleus is known as the generative nucleus. The small nucleus is known as the generative nucleus. Okay. And this large irregular nucleus is known as tube nucleus or vegetative nucleus. Or vegetative nucleus. Okay. After that, there is unequal cytokinesis. After that, there is unequal cytokinesis. Yes. And this unequal cytokinesis produces what? Two cell. Two cell. One is the generative cell. Another is the vegetative cell. This generative cell is smaller. This vegetative cell is larger. Clear? Now, the bicell structure of the pollen grain is partially developed male gamete or a mature pollen grain is given. So, how we can draw, if we can just find out the development of the pollen grain in the angiosperm, the 60% of the pollination occurs in the bicell stage. In the remaining angiosperm, pollination occurs at the three cell stage. And this three cell stage, what happens when the generative cell divides into two male gametes? Uh, uh, here, the generative cell what happens in this generative cell? It divides into two male gametes. Okay. In case of whom? In case of the angiosperm, in the remaining angiosperm. In the 60% angiosperm, this happens that the generative cell forms the, the pollination occurs in this cell, this bicell stage, when there are two cells. One is the generative cell and one is the vegetative cell. But in 40% in of the angiosperm, what happens? This generative cell again divides and forms the two male gametes and then the fertilization actually starts occurring. Okay. So, we can also see the diagram of the, uh, the or diagram which is present in our book. Now, the new generative cell changes into spindle shaped structure and enters inside the vegetative cell. Suppose this was your generative cell and vegetative cell. I will only draw the mature one. So, this one was the vegetative cell. This one is the vegetative cell, right? This one is the vegetative cell. This one is your generative cell. Now the new generative cell changes into spindle shape. It was uh, it was round and now it has changed into this shape. This has changed into this shape. And then it enters into the vegetative cell. And then the fertilization actually uh, or the development more it occurs. Right. Now after that post pollination development. Post-pollination development takes place on the stigma after pollination. Intines come out through the germ pore. Okay. What happened in post-pollination? Okay. In the post-pollination development, it takes place after the stigma gets or receives the pollen grains. Clear? So, the intern comes out through a germ pore to form the pollen tube and then the vegetative nucleus enters into the pollen tube which are the, through the tip of the terminal. Next, what happens? The new spindle shaped genetic cell enters and divides into mitotically to form the two non motile male gametes. Now, remember this that male gametes are non motile. These are not motile. These are non motile male gametes. Now, the me new male gamete is a three cell structure. This is a three cell structure. Matlab, kya hoti usme? One vegetative cell plus two male gamete. Right? This is known as mature male gametophyte. This is known as mature male
gametophyte. Okay. Now the formation of the mature pollen grain. What happens? One meiotic division plus one mitotic division is needed. But the formation of mature male gametophyte. What happens? One meiotic division is needed plus two meiotic divisions are needed. At formation of the pollen grain on mature pollen grain, what we require? We require one meiotic division. Meiotic. Remember, this is not mitotic. Meiotic plus one mitotic division. So this was the formation of the pollen grain. Okay, mature pollen grain, and this is the formation of the mitosis or meiosis, and that is two mitotic division. Now the pollen grain of the several species cause allergies and chronic bronchial disorder like asthma, bronchitis. So when there will be showering of the pollen grain during the spring time or the spring season, then if you are if you are allergy people, you can just uh, go aside because it causes asthma or bronchitis in per and it varies from person to person. Now Parthenium is an example, such as the pollen grains of the Parthenium. If you get the pollen grains of the Parthenium flower, then just, just uh, don't go because it can cause allergies. Okay. Now the pollen grains are rich in the nutrients and they are used in the form of tablets to improve the performance of the athlete and the resources. So this is very very pollen products that are bee pollen and etc. So pollen products are very very rich in nutrients and they provide us lots of energy. And it also improves our performance. Now number two is the pistil and the megasporangium. Or the ovule or the embryo sac formants, formation. Okay, so we now till now we have studied about the male gamete formation. Now we'll study about the ovule or the female gamete formation. Okay, that is the number two ovule formation. What formation? Till now we have studied about stamen formation. Now we'll study about pistil formation. We'll study about megasporangium. Study about megasporangium, and which is known as the ovule. And we also will study about the embryo sac formation. Okay, embryo sac formation. Now, to study about gynoecium. So, what is gynoecium? So, gynoecium is the pistil. Okay, or carpel. Gynoecium is the pistil or carpel, which is also known as megasporophyll. Mega sporophyll. Okay, this one is S. Now the carpel. This is the carpel. It contains three main parts. Three main parts. What are the three main parts? First one is stigma. Second one is style. Third one is ovary. Okay. Stigma, which is the landing position, landing something uh, which we may say a landing position or the landing platform, we may say, right, for the pollen grains. Style is the carrying canal. Style is the carrying canal. And ovary is the ovarian cavity. Ovary means the ovarian cavity. Now, what this ovarian cavity contains? What this ovarian cavity contains? This ovarian cavity contains placenta. Okay, placenta, and this placenta arises from the arising from placenta at the megasporangium, which is called as ovules. From this placenta, what what arises? Megasporangium. Which is only collectively known as ovule. Okay, ovule. Now, the megasporangia, single ovule, this, this is also asked that is single ovule and many ovule. Megasporangia, two types. It can have many ovule or it can have single ovule. When it will have single ovule, then example will be wheat, mango, right? When it will be have many ovules, then it will be papaya. Then it will be papaya, okay? 
when it will contain single carpel when it will be there will be single carpel then it will be monocapillary monocarpillary sorry carpillary condition and more than one carpel it will be multi multi carpillary clear multi carpillary when there is multi carpillary there is two type one is fused and free multi carpels may be fused or it may be free when it is fused okay when it is fused it is known as syncarpus it is known as syncarpus okay and when it is free it is known as apocarpus when it is free it is known as apocarpus syncarpus example is paperwork hibiscus and apocarpus example is rose wheat and mytelium okay now there is lot of diagram which you can find of a flower of a day and how it it is forming and all it in your book obviously you can refer to the diagrams now how the microsporangium or the ovule develops how the microsporangium or the ovule develops first it is attached to what it is attached to sorry attached to yes it is attached to placenta by tunicle okay or the point of attachment is known as ilium point of this attachment is known as helium sorry helium these are very very important these two are the neat mcqs okay these two are the neat mcqs now you can just refer to these diagram which is given in your book where all the parts are clearly mentioned okay all the parts are clearly mentioned here one ovary is there very nicely so this this position or this attachment it is known as the helium okay next comes the funicle funicle is this part after uh, um, uh, this one was the helium and after that comes the funicle okay and then comes the micropyle okay here was the micropyle here so you can just refer to the diagram and you can just study next we'll uh, um, study about the megasporogenesis study about megasporogenesis how it happens actually so in the megasporogenesis one of the hypodermal cell of the nucleus one of the hypodermal if you see the previous diagram you can find the nucleus okay and there one of the hypodermal cell of the nucleus differentiates and form the arche porial cell okay now this arche porial cell goes on mitotic division it goes on mitotic division and it forms the primary parietal cell and the primary sporogenous cell as similarly in the male gamete similarly in the female gamete primary parietal cell okay which we will write ppc and psc that is a primary sporogenous cell these two directly act as megaspore mother cell dono ek sath hi kaam karte hain megaspore mother cell dikhate hain and this is also known as this is formed in the micropylar region so this is very ask that where it is formed where the thing is formed actually where the phenomenon is formed so you have to mention it is formed in the micropylar region okay microspore mother cell the microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis the microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis which is formed as a total four haploid megaspore it gives us the four haploid megaspore Now this megaspore are also tetrad in nature. These megaspore are also tetrad in nature. The three spore towards the micropyle say degenerate. The three spores which is present towards the micropyle, among these, the three spores degenerate. Okay, degenerate. And one that is one spore remains at the chalazal end. one pore remains at the chalazal end so this remaining spore only goes the through the development of the embryo sac or the gametophyte okay so here the clear diagram is also present in your book 
of diode and tetrad of the mega megaspore clear now we we'll study about the development of the embryo sac or the female gametophyte how the female gametophyte is actually developing just give me one second so how the female gametophyte develops there is there is a first cell of the female gametophyte what is the first cell female gametophyte if you like our session make sure that you share this session with your friends so that more and more people uh, can join us live the female gametophyte there is a first cell what is the first cell named as megaspore obviously right in the male gametophyte it was microspore and microspore is only known as the pollen grain here so here in the male female gametophyte megaspore is there and it divides mitotically it divides mitotically and it forms two nuclei forms two nuclei now each move towards the opposite pole after that each okay again what happens again they divides again divide mitotically This is known as twice division. Okay, and this they form two, so they form four nuclei at each pole. Okay, the so total equals to eight. Clear? this was the total phenomena now out of these four nuclei from each pole migrates to the center of the polar nuclei everyone migrates to the polar nuclei right but towards the center center polar nuclei right then what happens after this what happens you can say after this there's cytokinesis after this there is cytokinesis okay as cytokinesis occurs at the both end the micropylar end there there becomes three cells at the micropylar end we can find three cells if this is the thing then we can find three cells at the micropylar end okay one cell is very large and it forms the egg cell right and there's two smaller cells which is which forms the synergy so one cell is very large it forms the egg cell and remaining two cell forms the synergy clear now this synergy it have the cellular frequency which is known as piriform apparatus and the chala in the chala cell end, this this was the micropylar end i was talking about the micropylar end okay and in the micropylar end there is there remain three cells in the chala cell end there are also three cells in the chala cell end there are also three cells what are the three cells the three cells are known as the antipodal cell the three cells are known as the antipodal cells right next the polar nuclei that becomes a polar nuclei right there becomes a polar nuclei this polar nuclei comes in the center or two cells are there which comes in the center and then they in the center they comes and then they fuse okay once they fuse just before fertilization this formation of two n of the secondary nucleus okay now three mitotic division when there is three mitotic division then there will be total eight nucleated structure formed in the embryo sac so this total division everything was going on where everything was going on in the embryo sac okay 
when it divides it have three division here two division right here one division so total how many division is there three division is there after three division what we are getting eight we are getting eight right eight nucleated structure eight nucleated structure this is known as your embryo sac that is in your embryo sac is formed okay in your embryo sac it is formed okay is it clear chala the length me antipodes is rehte hain and in the filiform apparatus as in the micropylarynge there it means the filiform apparatus just to polar nuclei up at this if this is your one second this is a here is a two polar nuclei they comes in the center they fuse together yes they comes in the center they fuse together forms the two end structure and then the fertilization actually occurs right this was the total fertilization of the male and the female gamete development of the male and the female gamete and how actually fertilization occur we have studied about pre fertilization and fertilization now we study about pollination before fertilization there is another phenomenon which is important or outside phenomenon which is happening that is known as pollination now what is pollination pollination is actually the transfer of the pollen grains okay what is pollination pollination is the transfer of the pollen grains clear pollination is the transfer of the pollen grains pollination are of different types transfer of the pollen grains from where from, from the anther to the stigma nothing else from one anther to the stigma this is known as pollination okay the pollination are of different types how many types may i have said three types i have said okay three so we will study about three types of pollination three types first is gitanogam gitanogamy gamus means marriage i already said autogamy and another is xenogamy okay now what is this what is autogamy autogamy means self pollination okay gitanogamy means pollination between two flowers of same plant same plant between two flowers and xenogamy is cross pollination okay so this is the difference between autogamy xenogamy and gitanogamy gitanogamy is genetically self pollination genetically it is termed as self pollination because no, uh, no no variation is created only you have planted a plant suppose this is the male flower this is the female flower and this and transfer of the anther from the female flower to the female flower of the same plant then this is gitanogamy right when you have planted a flower and this is a male flower female flower is there but when they will transfer if this is the female flowers when they will transfer from this flower to this then it will be known as cross pollination or xenogamy okay now pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower is known as self pollination this is known as autogamy autogamy means if in this is a flower it is also having the male and the female right and they are uh, self pollinating each other okay the anthers in the male is falling in the female so this will be known as totally self pollination now monoecious plant in the monoecious plant both the male and the female flowers are present at the same plant okay which is uh, this is monoecious in the autogamy we get the monoecious plant okay same uh, male and the female gamete is present in the same flower okay or in the which is present in the same plant in the dioecious plant there is no autogamy no xenogamy autogamy xenogamy is not present in dioecious plant which is only uh, uh, sorry gitanogamy is not present and the more dioecious plant is only found in the xenogamous plant they always go xenogamy that is unisexual flowers are unisexual in monogamy the flowers are bisexual okay containing the male and the female flower both so this was the difference between autogamy xenogamy and each other now there are lot of adaptation for self pollination 
we can adapt there is lot of adaptation for cell pollination and lot of adaptation on cross pollination cell pollination and cross pollination cell pollination adaptation cross pollination adaptations so what are the adaptation first we can go through monocliny next we can go through homogamy cleistogamy and bud pollination here in cross pollination we can go through dicliny dicogamy chasmogamy and self incompatibility okay dicogamy contains again two things one is proto protandry right another is protogyny okay i'll explain each and every term first we start with adaptation for cell pollination what the plants of the or the what the unisexual plants can adapt so that they can have the cell pollination okay the cell pollination adaptation by which plants which plant will do this cell pollination right one second which type of plants will do this cell pollination dear the unisexual plants obviously because they don't have the another partner with them and who will do the bisexual we will do cross pollination the bisexual plant will do the cross pollination that is they will go against the environment clear so monocliny what is monocliny the in the in this type of plant the flowers are only bisexual the flowers are only bisexual for example peas we can flower the flowers bisexual so we can get it easily it is naturally monocliny next homogamy in the homogamy both the sex that is male and the female mature at the same time okay this is the mature if they mature at the same time then they can have the male and the female gamete is maturing at the same time so we are having the homogamy that is self pollination can happen anther and the stigma is maturing at the same time and the anther will shed its pollen grain to the stigma at the same time and the stigma will also carry the pollen grain at the same time and there will be self pollination right then comes the cleistogamy in the cleistogamy the flowers are bisexual which do not open throughout the life the flowers are closed actually these flowers are closed the if the flowers will not open any time in their whole lifetime then what type of pollination will it will happen it will always have self pollination for example in the communalis viola oxalis these type of are the example okay you can find lots of example what is bud pollination bud pollination is pollination occurs through at the birth stage when they are bud before maturation when the pollination will occur so the if there is no maturation of the pollen grain and if the pollen grain is not able to mature if it is not able to mature how it will pollinate how it will go so go on through pollination how it will be transferred it will not will be transferred and at the birth stage there will be pollination so this type of see is seen in wheat rice this type of uh, things okay now coming to cell pollination what are the processes we can sorry call cross pollination what are the processes we can do or that is the bisexual plants which is having the male and the female gamete both with them they can do to obtain cross pollination or to for or to pollinate the flower or a different flower to pollinate a different flower or to mate with a different flower what they can do they can do the process versus dicliny that is the presence of unisexual flower if there will be naturally present of unisexual flowers okay then they there will be obviously cell pollination right when there will uh, when there will be maturation then what we will do we will just uh, 
if but um, when they will maturation of the anther we will cut out the anther and uh, then we will make the flower totally unisexual and if the flower is unisexual uh, it have to do cross pollination it have to find a mate or a female gamete right if it is a male and if we remove the stigma or the stamen then it it have to find out the stigma and the stamen from another flower then this is dicline dicogamy dicogamy can happen in two type of thing that is protoandry and protogyny okay proto protoandry matlab uh, andry that is anthrus and uh, that is androsium gyny means gynosium anther mean the male gyny mean female when the male mature first and it is always the the always the opposite homogamy that's why i have written like this in homogamy they mature at the same time but in dicogamy they are one thing that the female and the male gamete mature at different time if the male gamete matures faster or earlier than the female gamete then it is known as protandry when the if the male if the female gamete develops faster or earlier than the male gamete then it is known as a protogyny clear now we come to chiasmogamy what is chiasmogamy chiasmogamy is the opening of the floral bud of a flower okay uh, when there is bud stage then it opens uh, opens first and then the pro and then somewhere the other anthers come and they put uh, their pollen grain at the bud stage and the flower is able to uh, cross pollinate according to their uh, position okay so this is known as chiasmogamy so opening of the floral bud in form of a flower that is known as chiasmogamy and next is self incompatibility that is pollen grains of the same flower cannot germinate on the stigma of the same flower that is known as self sterility sometimes the pollen grains are sterile all the pollen grains cannot germinate at the same time uh, it happens in case of the tobacco petunia grapes so that when there will be sterility then there can be a, uh, when there will be sterility in their own partners then we have to find a partner from outside right so we have to find a partner from outside so we have we will uh, so the plants will have again a cross pollination clear yeah. now there are some agents which help in this pollination or you may say cross pollination so who are the agents of pollination agents are very very important agents of pollination two type of agents can be there one is abiotic that is non living agent right another is biotic agent that is the living agent obviously living this abiotic agent can be two things one is wind another is water biotic agent or living agent is birds animals right this is this is known as animophilic this is known as animophilic this is known as hydrophilic and this is known as zoophilic okay so pollination by water is hydrophilic pollination by wind is animophilic pollination by birds is or birds or animals is known as zoophilic okay now animophilic is found in which type of plant in the low uh, in the plants or in the wind can carry those pollen grains which are lighter in weight which are non sticky which are light which are small right and which can be which have well exposed stamens the stamens are the stigma is very large in them hairy stigma is present suppose if the plant will be like this it will be hairy hairy i mean i mean pollen grain will be like this hairy 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 so wind can only carry this type of hairy pollen grains right these can be find in grasses in grass family or the gramineae family we can find this next in the water when there will be water pollination will water this very very rare and you can find mostly in the monocots in the fresh water we can find valisneria in the hydrilla in the jostera so valisneria hydrilla hydrilla these are the
fresh water plants fresh water i mean right fresh water and the marine in the marine water pollination we can find chostera okay so these are the fresh uh, uh, okay so water pollination is very 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 rare so water pollination is very 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 rare and we can find this water pollination in the in the fresh water plants and the marine water plants now comes the zoophily zoophily can be by insects okay especially when it is by ants then it is known as enter entomophily it can also be by some snake which is known as or it can also be by bats when it is by bats right it is known as cryptophily next after pollination we will study about pollen pistil interaction so in the pollen pistil interaction what happens actually and yes when it when the pollination is by birds it is known as ornithophily when it is by snails it is known as malacophily in the pollen pistil interaction what happens the pollen tube reaches the ovary and then it enters ovule via the micropyle okay and then it enters one of the synergies via the filip filipium apparatus the study shows that this apparatus guides the pollen grain after this this filiform apparatus actually guides the pollen grain okay now pollen pistil interaction is of two types it is a very dynamic process and pollen deposition of the stigma until the pollen tube enters the ovule it is a very i mean say it me it is a pollen pistil interaction is a very dynamic process okay so what happens there is manipulation of interaction sometimes we can also manipulate when we are doing um, hybrid or we are producing hybrid then we can manipulate this in, uh, pollen pistil interaction so when do we do this manipulation of the pollen pistil interaction 
it is used for the production of desired hybrids why do it this is we produce the desired hybrids right and this ultimately turns to artificial hybridization this ultimately turns to artificial hybridization clear now what is artificial hybridization artificial hybridization is desired pollen grains are used for the pollen pollination stigma is protected from the contamination the stigma is really protected and we have uh, the protection techniques what are these protection techniques we'll learn about artificial hybridization now okay So here we get the desired pollen pollen grains for pollination, and we get desired, and the stigma is protected from any of the contamination. So two processes are there. First one is emasculation. Okay, first one is emasculation. It is very very important. We also study this emasculation in the food improvement products. So if the flowers are bisexual, if the flowers are bisexual, then the removal of the or early removal of the anthers. Early removal of the anthers because what we want, we want a dicleni, right? We want dicleni. So when we want dicleni, that is cross pollination, then we have to remove the anthers. So early removal of the anthers are known as emasculation, right? And number two is bagging. What do we do this? How the stigma is protected from any of the contamination? The covering of the emasculated flowers. To prevent contamination, to prevent what? To prevent contamination. There will be no disease in this flower because it's a yield. It will be having a good yield. It will be providing a good hybrid to us, and so we don't want any type of disease plant. We want a disease-resistant plant, right? So that's why we will cover the stigma when the stigma matures. So when the once the stigma matures, right? Then we what do we do? The we dust out the pollen grain. Okay. Dust, uh, dusted pollen grains are dusted. Pollen grains are dusted, and then what happens? The flowers are repacked. Flowers are repacked. A package is there. Suppose like this, a package is covered like this. A package is there, and the flowers are. If if this is the flower, okay. This is this is the packet, the packet. The flowers is tied like this, and these flowers are rebacked. Okay. Now, this was all about artificial hybridization. Now we will study about next thing that is double fertilization. How actually double fertilization happens, right? So double fertilization happens like before the entry of the pollen tube into the embryo cell. Double fertilization is the main thing. Double fertilization is the main thing of this chapter which you should learn and study. This carries a lot of marks. You may say five marks question. You can answer in your boards and also in your NEET. Double fertilization is very important. Now before the entrance of the pollen tube into the embryo sac. Both the pollen nucleus first fuse and forms the diploid nucleus, right? First, what happens? Enter of the pollen tube into the embryo sac before the entry of the pollen tube. Before the entry of the pollen tube, what happens? There's a fusion. There's a fusion, right? And the fusion of fusion forms a both the polar nuclei fuse actually. Here the polar nuclei fuse. And then they forms the diploid nucleus. Diploid nucleus is always of two end structure, right? Because here the polar nuclei, a male and the female gamete was then male and the female gamete fuses and it produces n plus n equals to 2n, right? This diploid nucleus is known as the secondary nucleus it is known as the secondary nucleus you can also make the short notes like this as i'm writing okay now what happens one male gamete 
is there. Learn, uh, understand this clearly. One male gamete is there. This male gamete fertilizes the egg cell. Fertilizes the egg cell. Right? This one is N. This one is N. Now what happens? For after fertilization of the egg cell, what happens? This is known as syngamy. This is known as syngamy. And what do we get? Yes, what do we get? We get a diploid zygote. We get a diploid zygote, right? Which is 2N. The diploid zygote develops into embryo. develops into embryo okay after this this one is the first case first part okay so is the first part next part what happens second part second part second male gamete comes okay then what happens this second male gamete Fuses with the secondary nucleus. Okay. This was known as the triple fusion. Here. So, at the starting of the video, what I said, double fertilization equals to Seen gamete plus triple fusion. Seen gamete plus triple fusion. So you can clearly cite that this one is was seen gamete, right? This one is triple fusion. After triple fusion, there is formation of primary endosperm nucleus. Primary endosperm nucleus okay this primary endosperm nucleus develops into what develops into endosperm develops into what develops into endosperm which is 3n in structure yes because it was triple fusion because it, it fuses the secondary nucleus, right? And what was the secondary nucleus here? Secondary nucleus was this. This one was the secondary nucleus. This diploid nucleus was the secondary nucleus. This one, this zygote. This diploid zygote is the secondary nucleus, right? So, it fuses the 2N secondary nucleus, second male gamete, which is N, and N plus 2N, 2N plus N forms, 3N that is endosperm. Okay. This is a triploid structure. What structure dear? This is a triploid structure. Okay. So what is double fertilization? Now we all know seen gamete plus triple fusion is double fertilization. If a teacher asks, don't get confused ever and say. If the teacher asks that what is double fertilization, you will say seen gamete plus triple fusion is double fertilization. Okay. Now we also get some remaining cells. Okay. We also get some remaining cells. What are these remaining cells? Yes. What are these remaining cells? These remaining cells are first one is antipodal cell. Antipodals, another is, another is synergies. Okay, these degenerate. These degenerate. Okay, so where do we get the antipodal cell? I show you. Right, these were the antipodal cells. This one at the chalazal end, if you remember, at the chalazal end, the antipodal cells were present at the chalazal end, right. This is the micropylorate. This one is the chalazalin. The upper one is a chalazalin. This was the antipodal cells. So 
the antiposal cell and this synergy because this this male and this egg has already or already this egg has fused right i'll show you here another time i'll draw it this was the egg okay and this was the synergy so this was synergy and these are the antipodal cells these are the antipodal cells okay and this are the this are this is the egg and this is the synergy this one is the flagellate this one is the micropylorent okay so when at last the synergies will when at last the synergies and the antipodal cell what will happen to them they will degenerate because the egg cell like this egg cell has already fused with the male pronucleus and formed the zygote and it also formed the endosperm that is the triple fusion the primary endosperm nucleus forms and they, the second male gamete has already formed the endosperm that is the new uh, triple or the triploid structure after that we will study about post fertilization events post fertilization Okay. In post fertilization events, what happened? First is endosperm development. How? What the happens to the endosperm? Now, the in the endosperm, the primary endosperm is present, right? Primary endosperm cell. The so primary endosperm cell goes on repetitive division. The primary endosperm cell goes repetitive division. Okay, and it forms the endosperm tissue. because we know that the many cells when many cells are there the many cells divide among each of themselves and they forms what they forms tissues the many cells divide and they forms tissues right and they form what they forms the endosperm tissues now endosperm tissues has what it has reserved food in it it has reserved food in it this was primary uh, endosperm cell the primary endosperm cell will form endosperm tissues this was 3n right and this uh, will have the reserved food in it okay now the new this primary endosperm cell goes on if there is nuclear endosperm this was the this was about the general idea but if there is nuclear endosperm nuclear endosperm this two type of endosperm nuclear endosperm and cellular endosperm okay so what happens to the nuclear endosperm the primary endosperm cell goes on pre nuclear division pre nuclear division and they form the multi nucleated endosperm okay they form the multi nucleated endosperm okay and then they goes on to cytokinesis they goes on to cytokinesis and then what happens mature multi nucleate endosperm we can see right and here we see the cellular endosperm so in the cellular endosperm for example coconut or white kernel we can find in this this is a cellular endosperm white kernel of the coconut right uh, which is present in the, um, the green coconut we can find the white portion or white part that white kernel of the coconut forms the water right and they forms free nuclear endosperm clear so this was all about nuclear endosperm and 
cellular endosperm. Now we'll study about embryo development. This was the first post fertilization event. First was endosperm development. How the endosperm is formed, um, uh, how it, it is being developed, right? It was all about the endosperm development. Now we'll study about the nuclear uh, uh, embryo development. Embryo development. So embryo develops at which end? Which which end it develops? It develops at the micropylar end. It develops at the micropylar end. Which is a micropylar? This down wala, down end is known as the micropylar end. And this one upper one was the chalazal end. Right. So embryo uh, develops in the micropylar end after the formation of endosperm. When the endosperm is formed, after that embryo develops. So how the embryo develops? We learn in clear diagram. First, the, this embryo embryonal cell. This embryonal cell develops into pro-embryo. Right? This pro-embryo develops into globular embryo. This globular embryo develops into heart-shaped embryo. Right? And then this heart shaped embryo develops into mature embryo. Clear? Now, we can find lots of embryo, dicot embryo, monocot embryo, which has different type of divisions. And you can also study the diagram of what? You will study the diagram from your book of the dicot embryo and monocot embryo okay two types of embryo development uh, two different types of there so you will study monocot in case of the grasses okay now after this we will study about number third third thing and the most important thing that is seed 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 development how the seed is developed actually gymnosperm in the gymnosperm there is naked seed so there is no development of the seed so much but in the angiosperm, there are seeds, right? In the angiosperm, there are lots of seeds. So in the seed, we can find in the angiosperm, the final product which we get. Sorry. In the angiosperm, the final product which we get after all this fertilization and all each and everything, the final product which we get, that is your seed, right? Seed is the final product. And this seed is fertilized seed. This seed is fertilized seed. Okay. Now this seed contains what? Three things. What are the three things? First one is seed coat. The outermost layer. Next, cotyledon. Cotyledon. And lastly, the embryo. Lastly, the germinating embryo. So, first if we draw a seed, then this seed. I'll draw a seed like this. Then this is the seed coat or the outer layer of the brown covering is known as a seed coat, right? Then un, un, uh, uh, inside the seed, we find two cotyledon, one and two, okay? So this is the cotyledon. And then here, somewhere here, we find the embryo. So outer brown layer, this is the brown, 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 brownish layer, okay? This is the seed coat then it is the cotyledon right this yellow region and then this brown region is known as the embryo blue is the embryo clear the mature seed are of two types one is albumina seed one is non-albumina seed albumina seeds are those seeds which reach in a part of the embryo endosperm and non-albumina seed is no residual part of the endosperm is remaining Two types of seeds are there. Albuminous and non-albuminous. What is the difference between this? In the albuminous seed, no residue of endosperm.
okay and retain endosperm part of endosperm it retains a part of endosperm then it is known as albuminous albuminous seeds are example is wheat example is maize example is barley example is castor right non albuminous seed example is pea groundnut okay sunflower these are the example of non albuminous seed now some seeds also have the remnant of the nucleus which is known as perisperm okay remnant of the nucleus is also present in some seeds these are known as a perisperm so this is the perisperm for example it is known as black pepper or beet now the integument of the seed or the ovary is known as a seed coat okay this is the integument or the outer layer covering this is the outer as in humans the integument is our skin integuments mean the outer layer covering the outer layer covering in the case of the seed is the seed coat or the integument of the ovary okay so seed coat is the integument of foam integument of ovary clear now the micropyle what is micropyle micropyle is a small pore in the seed entry of the ovary so yeah, uh, in the in the uh, seed or the in the gram right you can find the small pore this is the micropyle end which is present in the seed okay next for what because of the entry of the oxygen and in favorable condition the feed seed germinates and non favorable condition it remains in dormancy non favorable in the okay, it's totally dirty unfavorable conditions if there is unfavorable condition okay unfavorable condition so what happens the seed keep we, uh, all the things which is present in the seed keeps in dormancy okay and in favorable condition when this favorable condition when this favorable condition it germinates this is two things which uh, are seen in a seed right next ovules always forms the seed right and ovary always forms the fruit right fruit can be two types one is fleshy fruit right like the mangoes and all one is dry fruits okay like the ground nut okay cashew nut these are the dry fruits fleshy fruits are guava mango orange these are the fleshy fruits okay and ground nut cashew nut mustard these all are your dry fruits now what is the wall of the ovary ovary wall is known as the fruit wall ovary wall is only known as a fruit wall and this fruit wall is only the pericarp pericarp which is the peels of the fruit peels of the fruit as we get in oranges right orange colored peel that orange colored peel is actually the pericarp okay now how our fruit develops we'll study about the development of fruit development of fruit how a fruit develops right so a fruit can develop from ovary direct from ovary if it develops right major in the majority of the plants we can find direct from ovary that is known as true fruits if it develops direct from ovary it is known as true fruits if it develops from ovary plus thalamus it develops from ovary plus it also takes the help of the thalamus okay i already showed you what is ovary if this one is this one is a flower okay this was the ovary and this was the stalk mother i are uh, the uh, other portion of the ovary that is containing the thalamus right so this is known as false fruit now you will tell that ma'am yes there is uh, if there is example of false fruit yes there is example like the cashew nut cashew nut strawberry apple 
okay so these are an example of these are the example of false food true fruit can be mango right these are example of true fruits now if we see our example of an apple how this apple looks like like this almost no it looks like this an apple here are the two seeds or the seed uh, seed region which we leave we don't eat the seed part and then we eat the other parts so this is the thalamus this is the thalamus which is developed into fruit this inside this was a seed the seed of the apple right here also some is there and then inside the thalamus inside the thalamus what we get the epicarp or endocarp or mesocarp okay inside the thalamus here we get the endocarp or the mesocarp in the cases of the strawberry in the case of the strawberry when we draw a strawberry if we cut a strawberry in the between this one is the thalamus what we actually eat and the outer part or the red area is known as the achene clear yeah. the fruits which develops out without fertilization when there is development of fruit without fertilization it is known as parthenocarpy okay so sometimes what happens that the female gamete sometimes what happens the female gamete grows matures and gives rise to a new plant gives rise to seed or fruit okay directly it doesn't need any pollination it doesn't need any father it doesn't need any male gamete the female gamete only does this thing there is no need of the female male gamete so this happens in case of the banana there is no father okay when there will no father this is known as parthenocarpy that is it is a seedless fruit there is no seed in them no seed for no seed formation seedless fruit okay so that is the phenomenon which is known as parthenocarpy and parthenocarpy is very very important let us study what is parthenocarpy now you can study also some seeds now some seeds can be uh, viable right and some seeds cannot be viable some seeds can live up to 2000 years and still it can be in the dormancy condition and then it can uh, germinate after 2000 years like uh the phoenix of the dactifera which is found in uh, found at the king herald's place near the dead sea right or the old seed of the dead palm that is uh, that can live up to 2000 years next some seed can also remain up to 10000 years some seeds can remain up to 10000 years of dormancy and it cannot germinate and it can germinate after 10000 years and they can remain in a viable condition right so this type of seeds also we can grow now the fruits which contain very large number of seeds fruit which contains very large number of seeds for example large number of seeds we can find in which type of fruits example is orchid okay example is ficus example is triga etc so these are the examples where we can find large number of seeds in such type of fruits fruits containing large number of seeds okay next is apomixis and polyembryo most probably the last topic we are studying now uh, and we have reached to the end of the session so last topic is apomixis and polyembryo okay so what is apomixis actually apomixis is the production of seed without fertilization when there will be no fertilization but there will be production of the seeds okay without fertilization seed production is known as apomixis okay and what this can be seen in some of the plants like asteraceae grasses and all in some of the citrus fruits also we can see right and what is polyembryo 
polyembryony there is a process in polyembryony first what happens i'll tell you first the cells of the new cells okay they divide and then enter the embryo sac okay after entering the embryo sac they develop into embryos So this total process is known as apomixis. How the apomixis is happening actually. The cells of the nucleus first divides and then they enter the embryo sac and then they develop as a new embryo. This was apomixis. Polyembryony, what is the word polyembryony? How, what do you mean by polyembryony? Polyembryony mean, means ovule which contains many embryos. Okay, ovule which contains many embryos. It is known as polyembryony clear now guys we have already studied and fully about the whole chapter i hope you like this video if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel Am anamika's edu space in the next video we'll study about human reproduction so you can see how many things we have studied so we started from there you can also take the snapshot this was a structure of the plant or the plant which I have taught you okay and then we started with sexual reproduction then after this we head to pre-fertilization or a blood pre-fertilization event then we studied about how the actually the microsporophyll and everything is going on then we studied about the male gametophyte then we studied about the structure of the anther, right? Then we studied about the endosperm and all about during the maturation what happens. Then we studied clearly about the layer that is the septum. Then we studied about the uh, division of the anther or the microsporogenesis. Then we studied about pollen grain, right? Then we studied about microgametogenesis. Then we studied about post fertility pollination events. Then we studied about pistil, megaspore and ovule in uh, embryo sac. Then we studied about the micros megasporogenesis. Then we studied about development of the female gamete. Then we studied about pollination. Then we studied about cell pollination and cross pollination adaptations. Then we studied about then we studied about agents of pollination. Then we studied about pollen pistil interaction. Then we studied about artificial hybridization. Then we studied about double fertilization. Then we studied about second male gamete or secondary male gamete and double fertilization. Then we studied about post fertilization events. Then we studied about embryo the micropyle end. Then we studied about the seed formation. Then we studied about the unfavorable condition of the fruits type fruits. Then we studied about development of a fruit and what are the false fruit and what are the true fruits. Then we studied about apomixis and polyembryony. And this was the last thing of the whole chapter of second chapter is totally completed i hope you have understood it clearly if you understood this please do share this video with your friends bye each and everyone